boycott, divest, sanction the American Empire. Because the American Empire is the primary force for decay, for globalism, for degeneracy in the modern world. The most obvious signs in your day-to-day -day life of the American power you will see is of course a McDonald's or a Domino's or one of these other big corporate uh, usually fast food places. That's that's a pollution of you f in your very core because of it, it's your diet, it's unhealthy, the products are um, extremely processed, it's bad for the environment because these huge mega corporations are the biggest polluters and if you can source your food locally, produce it locally, keep the money in your local economy, you have more control over the legislation that happens over uh, the businesses that sell it, the profits that are made from it, the environmental regulations on the farmers, um, for example, like the KFC and, and McDonald's and so on, they have these deals with, with logistic distribution networks that reach all across the globe so their eggs are sourced from one manufacturer and so on, so they don't buy much local. It's all shipped all over the world. That's bad because it consumes a lot of oil. It's bad because it allows them to dodge environmental regulations wherever they are, it, uh, health regulations. So it's it's bad on all levels. It's bad for your for your own internal financial market. It's bad for your health because it's sugary, fatty, crap food. It's bad um, because of the pollution. It's bad for the environment boycott these American companies. It's the same with clothing as well. If you can buy European clothing, if you can buy locally produced clothing and food. Same at the same time there's also this this pollution go this this American hegemonic pollution is uh present in the language you use. You'll notice uh, especially in the Netherlands there's this phenomenon of people speaking a sort of mix of Dutch and English and sometimes a little bit of Moroccan street language especially among the youth it's it's basically not Dutch anymore and uh, so you have to be attentive like try to avoid these English words because it's unnecessary our languages are perfectly uh, fitted to express all these concepts now that might seem ironic to you then why am I making these videos in English why is my channel mostly in English um, that has to do with the unfortunate circumstances of this em empire if I want to reach Dutch people, I have to speak in English, because Dutch people, especially the younger they are, do not consume Dutch language media. They don't watch TV, so where did they go? They go to English language websites, American websites like YouTube, and to be able to be found and you know to get shared around, to get a bit of an audience going, to get momentum, you best speak English. That's simply how it is. It's just even for nationalists. If you want to reach a nationalist audience. You have to go to an American website like, say, a Countercurrents, for example, or uh, name any. You go to them, there you have to, you know, make a podcast or write an article to inform people that there is such a thing as Dutch content creators, that there is such a thing as Dutch movements, that there are certain concerns internally in the Netherlands. And then Dutch people read it there, and then you can sort of drag them back to paying attention to their own country. Many, many Dutch nationalists are better informed, in my experience, about how the American political system works, about American political concerns, about American political ideologies. They don't really know or understand our own political history, or sometimes they don't even know all the parties or the, the history of our political parties, or the nationalist tradition, or the nationalist movements we have here. And they don't visit uh, Dutch nationalist websites, not that there are many, to be honest, which has, uh, this is sort of like a, you know, vicious circle effect. There's few Dutch nationalist websites, so people don't go to them, so they don't grow, so don't, so more don't pop up, so that's, that's, you know, the vicious, you don't have much Dutch content creators either. There's more Swedes, for example, and if I make a video with the golden one, for example, I do a, a video with him, then his comment section will be full of of Dutch people saying, oh, I didn't know there were these Dutch events and so on and blah, 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 because they're, they have to look around elsewhere. That's very annoying. And this has a lot to do with, with the, this, this cultural globalization, this, this hegemony of America and the English language. So if you're listening to this, try and pay attention to these sort of things in your own day-to-day -day life. Try to avoid English, try to avoid buying all these cheap global 
uh, products, you know, all these plastics, this IKEA furniture. Um, though IKEA is, of course, Swedish, but I wouldn't say that it's Swedish imperialism. They just have a lot of wood they need to get rid of, I think. A lot of forests. Um, but think about these things in your day-to-day -day life. Boycott, divest, sanction America from your life. Focus on your own country, your own language. Look around what's happening around you rather than being more concerned about Trump's re-election or uh, what the Republicans did now or whatever, on eating Burger King. These sort of things are just weird, unhealthy obsessions. That's just a little PSA, I guess, I wanted to make.